Hello and welcome everybody and thank you for joining me into the second Phaeton Abyssal Dungeon, Tranquil Carcosa. Similar to the first one, we have the oxygen mechanic, so a quick TLDR is. Take a look at the circle above your head when it's about to be depleted. Please refill your oxygen, otherwise you will take periodic damage, which is lethal. To refill oxygen, either use the rippling bubbles or the purple flowers. There are two important things about this boss. First of all, the yellow AoEs that he sometimes does, if you get hit by those, it also depletes your oxygen. Not completely by one go, but around one third of your bar is going to be vanquished. So keep that in mind when you get hit too often or when you're close to low oxygen. Be prepared that if you get hit, it may instantly get you to zero oxygen and start taking away at your health. Outside of this, he has a two-part mechanic, which starts around 16 to 15 HP as far as that really depends on the moveset and the amount of damage that you can deal. He starts that mechanic by summoning two mages that will shield the main boss. Those two mages are shielded themselves, and you need to use weak point skills or destruction bombs as indicated by the crosshair. I highly encourage everybody to carry destruction bombs, because this mechanic is a bit of a timely matter. After destroying the shields of the mages, you can now kill the mages, and once those are dead, you can finally deal damage to the main boss again. This is important because soon after that, you're gonna have a stagger check, and if you fail to stagger the boss here, he will crash a ghost ship into the party, wiping out everybody. He does repeat this mechanic at around 2 to 3 HP bars. Typically, for me, I never encounter this more than once because my party's damage is usually high enough. Also, a little trick here, if you keep your awakenings for when the boss hits this critical threshold, just advise everybody to use their awakening and burst down the last few HP bars. In the event that you encounter this mechanic a second time, the functionalities are exactly the same. Split up, destroy the shields of mages, kill the mages, then go back to the center, wait for the stagger check to appear, stagger the boss, and you're done. A couple more nords here, I highly advise everybody to carry at least destruction bombs, ideally destruction and whirlwind bombs. The destruction part can be tricky, especially if people don't know what their weak point abilities are, so I highly encourage everybody to bring bombs to this fight, because failing this mechanic because you either didn't break the shield or you don't have enough stagger is very painful, and everybody keeps on wasting resources, so definitely get used to the feature and bring bombs. Secondly, there are two more moves that I'd like to explain. The first one here is the shotgun move. This one's fairly straightforward. If you see a shotgun appear in front of your character, just do not point it at the character. Move away, ideally into the corners, because this will knock up your teammates. And if you repeatedly knock up other people, they may either drown because they run out of oxygen, or they may find themselves knocked up in other AoEs. And the last move that is somewhat hard to dodge, especially at the start of the game, is the pizza. Now this covers the area around him in three sections. And the safe spot here is the tool slash weapon that he's not holding up. In this example here, he's holding up the pistol or shotgun. So the AoE where the shotgun is pointed at is actually the one you don't want to be in. Notice the other two have anchors, so the anchors here are the safe spot. Likewise, if he holds up the anchor, you want to stand in the pizza slice where the shotgun is pointed to. Boss number two doesn't really have any crucial or any game breaking mechanics or wiping mechanics. The same rule here is watch your oxygen, don't get hit by anything too often and just kill the boss. So we're just gonna quickly graze over this one and directly go into third one because there is a much more intricate mechanic coming up ahead. So what you see here is people know how the mechanics work and what we're doing here is we are actually taking positions. Now this may not be as obvious, so here's an illustration of what actually happened. So behold my glorious paint skills. So either imagine this as a clock or a card in a direction. So north, northeast, east, southeast, south, and so on and so forth. Now there are eight spots because we are eight people and this is very crucial to assign these spots beforehand. Otherwise, this mechanic will definitely be quite disastrous. See that one of these circles is red and this is my position and I will use this to illustrate what you have to do in order to fulfill this mechanic. The mechanic is about to fire off when the boss positions himself in the center. I'm taking the position that I got assigned myself to first of all, and then we're gonna rotate in this particular example clockwise, but counterclockwise works as well. You can see that I'm taking an orb and I started with a yellow orb, then blue, then yellow again, and then blue. And this is all you need to do for the first mechanic to work. There's four orbs, everybody has to take an alternating orb, and this is why taking positions here is so very crucial. 
The mechanic happens again with a couple twists. First of all, you see the ring of lightning. Don't touch it. Ideally, I think it's better to stay inside. You can also stay outside. Just don't touch it. Second of all, take your positions again. And then orb number three and four are actually to be taken on the same spots. And then you have a fifth orb. So have one more orb and a little twist. I'll show you that particular section here again. Moving into orb number three, which is in this case a lightning orb. And orb number four turns into a blue one. And you can see that I don't move. Ideally, nobody else moves. You can see some people miss, messed up. And there we go. Orb number five is a lightning orb again. And that also then completes the mechanic. And after you completed these two mechanics, you're pretty much done. All that's left to do is to kill the boss. And that's it for the second Fate in Abyssal Dungeon. I do hope you found this helpful. If you did, then please consider leaving a like and sharing this video. Aside from this, I also stream every now and then. You can find my Twitch link and also other social media links in the description below. Aside from that, thank you for being here, and I'll see you either on the next stream or the next video. So do stay safe, and see ya!